Focus. What's up? Man? We are definitely focused. Um, welcome to Live with Steve Lobel. We appreciate you. Um, for the people under a rock who don't buy, know by now that I've been in the music industry 30 years and you've been in 25 years and super producer. Thank you. Um, break me down a little bit of some of your stuff and your career and who you are as a producer and so on and so forth. All right, for sure. Um, well, I'm the son of Bernard Edwards from Chic. Uh, bass player from Chic, yeah. So uh, that's all I've really known. You know, he did uh, Good Times, which was part of uh, Rapper's Delight. So hip hop is all I've ever known, you know what I'm saying? So uh, when I first got started, I was in R&B. Um, I really started taking it seriously. Uh, well, I can't say really started because it was like eight years old, but to me, it uh, really got serious for me around 19 years old. and. Um, I moved me out west, and a lot of the people that know me now know me by my affiliation with Aftermath, with Dr. Dre, so I've been with him for some, some time now, and we're still rocking. Um, so would you say that your father inspired you to become who you are? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Not only am I his namesake, but he was my biggest hero and idol, you know what I'm saying? Um, I wanted to be exactly like him. Uh, I even started <laughs> picking up his bad habits, like drinking Heineken's and, and smoking Marlboro's, you know what I'm saying? I thought everything he did was cool, and when he would produce, um, I knew at a young age I wanted to be a producer. I didn't understand everything that it entailed, but I knew I wanted to be that. Did you ever think in your wildest dreams that you'd be with Dr. Dre? Nah. I thought I, thought I was going to be a hitman. I thought I was going to be with Diddy. Especially being from New York. Uh, no you know disrespect, that's a good one though. Yeah. <laughs> Stevie J, Ron Lawrence, exactly. uh, D-Dot. Of course. You know, and, all of them. and I'm sure yeah. there's some more, so okay. Yeah, so that's, that's where I'm from, you know what I'm saying? So that's, I wanted to be over there, but getting with Dre, I'm like, come on, man. I, right. And you were born in New York? Yes, sir. And then, you know, you're with a West Coast legend. Ain't that something? Crazy. Uh, you know, with Live with Steve, we go all over the place. We yes, take sir. it all over. Um, yes, what is focus? Favorite instrument in the studio? Wow, my favorite instrument in the studio is the voice. I love the fact that a voice can do anything and it can go anywhere at any given time. An instrument is only limited to what an instrument can do, but the best instrument to me is somebody's voice. Wow, I gotta really dissect what you just said. That's amazing. Because I knew I threw you off with the question, but that's amazing. Okay, so without the human part of the body, mm -hmm. what is the best piece of equipment Ooh. that you Favorite love. piece of equipment, even though everybody thinks it's a relic, is the MPC 3000, of course. Well, the new mm -hmm. generation didn't really know about that, but yeah, MPC, but any, you any kind of drum machine. I love anything that, that, that does drums. I'm, I'm a drum head. And what does, as a session set up, Dre calls or whoever might call, like Soleil mm -hmm. or Joe, Right. Or what schoolboy Q, whoever you work with calls and says, yo, focus, studio session. Mm. What, do, what is your mindset to prep for that? And then what do you need to go in the studio to work? Mindset is to go in there and give it my best. I have, uh, and those that do know me, I have a family that is my A number one. And um, I don't accept failure. You know what I'm saying? So when I go into some place, I have to immediately connect with the artist, uh, be it a past relationship or a new relationship. I want to connect with the artist and I want to make sure that we come out with something amazing. And so I, I just keep my family at the forefront. You know what I'm saying? So I know what I'm working for. I'm not worried about uh, getting a bunch of money in a Bentley and things like that. I'm worried about you know making sure that my family's taken care of. And what I need is honestly, clarity uh, of the situation when I'm walking in. I got my laptop, I keep a really small rig just because I like being mobile. And uh, a bottle of Hendrix. <laughs> that gin is, uh, uh, it, it eases the, uh, the rough edges because I'm not too much of a people person. Got you. Um, your favorite track that you've produced of all time? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> wow, is Yes by Beyonce because that kind of started the snowball rolling. Um, to, to come out the gate with her on her freshman album, you know what I'm saying, and to, to, for it to resonate the way it did, and it started such a big 
uh, snowball effect in my career with the relationships and everything. That that one is really near and dear to me. Congrats on that, by the Thank way. Thank you so much. Um, your favorite producer of all time? I'm giving you some hard ones, but please. You, but you are not pulling punches. I love it. Um, we can always go to the dealers when it comes to hip hop. But I'm definitely going to go my overall favorite producer is Prince. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Um, any artist that you could go in the studio with, dead or alive, to work with, who would that be? And you've worked with a lot, a lot of people. <laughs> That's been a blessing. Uh, dead or alive, I can go through a list. Biggie Smalls is A number one. I would love to work with Snoop. I would love to work with Kim Burrell, Brandy, Mary J. Blige. Um, Snoop? And you haven't worked with Snoop yet? I haven't had a chance to work with him. Dog, we need to make this happen, dog. <laughs> we, but he was on One Shot, One Kill. That was my closest with, with the Compton album. But I would definitely love to work with him. Um, I'm hearing that he's putting a, a project together now, and I'm definitely trying to put my hands on it. speak that into existence. And most definitely. Okay, then I'm going to be on that project. <laughs> exactly. There it is. And, uh, and also Pharrell. I, I have a big respect for what he does. I think he, he still makes music from a pure place, and, and I dig that. Who do you like currently produ producing-wise? My producers are off the, the beaten path, man. I'm going to start naming a bunch of new ones like Siege, uh, Dem Joints, uh, of course DJ Khalil, like I, yeah. Danan Porter, like I can go through you know, a whole bunch of people. Uh, but I love the, the, the new people that have something to prove because you can hear it in their music. Like all, I have a... A production camp that I'm putting together now. The leg? Producers. Yeah, the tell leg. us about the leg. Yes, sir. The leg stands for the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Um, I got the Olympics, Analogic, uh, Aaron Sumlin, and this kid Claudio Audio. They're all from different walks of life, and everybody just, they have something to prove. They have that hunger, and you can hear it in the track. So I just want to really see them win, and I feel, I feel like my heart is moving away from making the music to making the moves for the music. And I think that it would be, uh, it, would, it would behoove me to turn around and, and know when to bow out, because some people just kind of stay too long, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? I like that. Um, any artists that you like right now that are out? Kendrick Lamar. I'm a big, huge, huge fan of his. Uh, John Connor, who's about to come and hit the ground uh, running. Um, Dem Joints has this, this uh, singer, her name is Jessica Jolie, I think her last name is, but she's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's all new people, you know what I'm saying? I, so I don't, yeah, because I'm not, I don't understand a lot of the stuff in hip-hop, I can't lie to you. It, I, it just doesn't, it's not connecting. Right. Yeah. How important was I standing to your career? When things fell apart, there were only... Um, and when you say fell apart, please let us know. Well, I can't say falling apart. I, I, I took a hiatus. Um, I, I actually walked away from music in 2008 for about four or five years. Why? Um, spiritual reasons, uh, physical reasons. I found out I had uh, diabetes. Sorry to hear that. Two. No, it's not even. Psh, we, we are. It's a victory, baby. I'm good. Um, diabetes, too. I was trying to get my, my life together with my wife. I was trying to get my life together with my children. Uh, spiritually, I just wanted to get on a, on a better path with God and get my uh, connection with Him much better and much stronger. And, and just find myself because I was so lost in um, trying to be focused from aftermath. And that was like my whole name. I was getting so lost in that. I was drinking a lot, gaining a lot of weight, and just losing self. And I, I, I started becoming shelled in and more of an introvert than I already am. So I, I took a, a, a hiatus in 2008. And the only people that were checking on me besides <laughs> Matt Fingers over here is, um, is I Standard. And they made sure that I, I stayed active. They didn't let me stay in my house and collect the cobwebs. They, they put me out there, had me judging things, and had me active. So they didn't give up. What's good? This is Focus. The arm is in the building. The leg is coming soon. And you're watching live with Steve LaBelle.